The original section of the underground was opened 156 years ago, but what is left of the original section of this underground? The original section of the underground is the section of the Circle and Hammersmith and City lines between Paddington and Farringdon. The station at Paddington is the one the Hammersmith and City and Circle line uses. There is another station in the Paddington area, the one that the Circle, District and Bakerloo line use. The station that is the terminus of the original underground looks very different to how you would expect. Most people visit Paddington and go to the station that used to be known as Parade Street. This station has high brick walls with arches and has more in common with the other stations on the line. However, the station that is the first terminus of the underground is the one that runs alongside the mainline services out of Paddington. The station has a very different look because the station has been rebuilt. The station feels really modern because it contains lots of glass allowing lots of natural light into the ticket hall area. There are lots of silver panelling. This reminds me of the Jubilee Line extension. The station is right by the Paddington Basin where there is the fan bridge and the rolling bridge. Edgware Road Station is the hub of all Circle Line services. This means that it has the most number of platforms of any of the original stations. However, only one of the island platforms is the original. The other was added later, when a curved track allowed Metropolitan Line trains to go to Kensington. The station building is from the 1860s, however this may not have been there when the station first opened, as the station at Paddington Parade Street has the same style of building, even though it was not built in 1863. The station is different from that of the Bakerloo line, much like at Paddington where there are two separate stations with the same name. However, on the tube map, the stations at Edgware Road are shown as two stations, not one large station. The station is one of the only that I have seen that uses red LEDs in the dot matrix displays. All of the stations I have seen use orange LEDs. Baker Street is a station that everyone knows, but does not know where it is. The station still features the brick arched roof that the station had when it was built. The station still has many of the original features and some other features from the early life of the station. For example, there are these Metropolitan Railway logos in the brickwork. Outside the stations, there are some stones laid in the wall by the people involved in the running of the Metropolitan Railway for the first 50 years. This station is famous because of its unique looks, however, the next station looks very similar. Great Portland Street Station is often forgotten because it's not near anything a tourist would want to visit, and people who commute to and from it probably don't pay any interest to it. The station itself is constructed on the middle of a roundabout with the building design is the same design as the other stations, but it continues around the entire building. The ticket hall has pillars holding up the roof in the centre of the building. The next station is Euston Square. This station looks very different from the other stations because it was rebuilt in the mid-2000s. This means the station does not look like any other on this section of line. The station features lots of glass on the south side of Euston Road, but on the north side it features a simple subway entrance. The station is the only place on the underground that features a complete set of the enamel signs that were say the station names with the lines within smaller rounds on either side of the station name. The station has also recently been retiled. King's Cross St Pancras also does not have many of the original features that the station had when it opened. The station serves the two mainline stations in its name, King's Cross and St Pancras. The station feels like one of the deep level stations due to the lighting used along the platforms.
The last station on the original section of the underground is Farringdon. The station that is here now is not the original station. The original station was a short distance away and was moved here when the Metropolitan Line was extended to Moorgate. The current station contains both the underground and Thameslink services, however at street level they use different station buildings. The conclusion of this video is very simple. The line is really good to travel along, but there are not many original parts left from 1863. Instead, most of the stations have been modernised and many of the features were removed after they were first opened. Instead, most of the stations have been modernised and many original features have been lost.